Chesapeake, the recipe for this group hallucination, era mentor. Tell Earl, hold on to your dentures. Declaration, reparation from the 19th century. Memories, long cold nights and dark circuses. Archetypes are broken, we bustin' through all the surfaces. Purposes to flood your ears with stories untold. Maybe flood your soul as the evening unfolds now. Truth bullets like a Harper's Ferry raid. Tell the women in the parlor, run my money. It's a sad day in K-May. If girl Minty don't get the cash, putting by for Gertie John Brown. Got the stash in the mountains. Literal fountains of black rain coming down in the cloud. Not really, but okay. it's a blame. Eh, what you expect? Hard as bricks, soft as lace, collars on the neck. Guess you gotta pull the train if you're running out of horses. Take a bite of hand pie like a chaplain ring endorsement. Now don't touch the dial on a black man's radio. Cruising 95, bizarre is the scenario. History is now with the Moses of the South. Leave you bitter like a swish of brandy in your mouth. I roll in like thunder, can you hear me cry? Other ladies down with wine while I'm dealing with time. Pulling back and forth, history is driven to fits. I got an issue, blow it all. Now I'm pulling the switch, now I'm pulling the rich. Call her honeys with all the money. Ain't it funny how they drool over my stories? Black pain leads to gain to free these slaves. Got pains in my brains, but living no days. I live in hell, escaping this existence. Yeah, they follow me to freedom, but we got it for spirits. Trapped in a spell, Father, can you hear me? Lead my people to survive. I hope the story out. Let me get my people to fight. Spark the flame, it ignites. If we gon' get through the night, then we gotta unite. I found my purpose when these verses rain down from the sky. Get up with the pistol, God's got the side eye. History is less no matter what the wind and where. And remember, that's open if you're scared. Mr. Ray and boy Nelson, don't forget that dude Claude, if he's done with silly questions, we ride. The ripples of pre-antebellum time, the audience is bawdiest when Abigail's the sorriest. Oh, but y'all know she means well, the lesser of two evils, as far as we can tell. Look here, the baby girl, gonna tell him where you at. Nosy ass neighbor, f***ing up my welcome mat. Skepticism, exorcism, to the prison drummer rhythms Smirk on their faces when they tell them about the scars Perplexed in the cortex, questions get hard Like where were we? For why? And to whom? Every question is a blessing, professing always a lesson When you're rocking with the general Reaches federal, state, and local teas We do it with ease Abby told me make it quaint, so I'm giving you a sample My name ain't John Brown, but I'm dealing out preambles Whose face do you see on the twenties you break? Broken arms and dreams, lost sisters it seems The only way through? Is to give him shock trauma So we're giving you the most of a woman without the armor History is hers, this stage and far beyond Are you ready? Hold it steady Cause we've only just begun Good evening everyone Good evening everybody Welcome to the African American Museum in Philadelphia I'm Ivan Henderson, our Vice President of Programming Which means I have the honor and privilege of working with the folks in our Curatorial Services Department As well as uh, those in our Programming Departments um, we encourage you all, of course, to visit the museum year-round. Uh, tonight we're gathered uh, here for a very special reason, but all throughout the year uh, we have a number of special reasons for you to come back. So check out our Learning Through the Arts workshops, take out a membership, volunteer with us, um, and of course check out the rest of our Harriet Tubman programming. Uh, beyond tonight on March 15th and 16th, we'll have in partnership with the Blocks and Collection uh, a couple of uh, scholarly talks around the legacy of Harriet Tubman, as well as online, a uh, youth-oriented arts and crafts uh, workshop or lesson around the legacies of Harriet Tubman, the follow the drinking gourd song, um, and so much more. So on behalf of our president and CEO, Dr. Ashley Jordan, our staff, our board, our members, and the small army of volunteers that support the museum, thank you for joining us this evening for General Harriet today. As we celebrate the 200th birthday of General Harriet Tubman, acknowledged in March, Women's History Month, uh, the approximate month of her birth in 1822. And March is also the known month of her transition in 1913. 
So we're proud to partner with author and playwright Lorene Carey, who will discuss and present staged readings from her production, My General Tubman, a play that draws inspiration from the latter part of Tubman's life and highlights connections between her legacy and contemporary events. Tonight's program will feature some of Carrie's creative work mediated by, mediated by actors from art and theater and framed by some of the known co contexts of Tubman's life, such as her love of hymns, the writings she kept with her, although she could not read, and her understanding of the importance of voting rights. This program is presented in partnership with the City of Philadelphia Office of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy, PA Youth Vote, Vote That John, Auden Theater Company, the Office of Philadelphia City Commissioner Omar Sabir, the Charles L. Bloxon Afro-American Collection at Temple University Libraries, Harriet's Bookshop, and Acoustic Vision LLC, as well as Embassy Inter Interactive. The, legendary, the legendary Lorreen Carey is author of the memoirs Lady Sitting and Black Ice, three novels and a book for young readers, among other works. She teaches at the University of Pennsylvania and has written a one act opera of Lady Sitting and a play, My General Tubman. She lives in Philadelphia, Lorraine Carey. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ivan. Thanks to the composer and sound designer, Jordan McCree and the original cast members. Uh, for music, which you may hear again at the end uh, with, with less interference. Um, the Tubman we know is the young woman of the Underground Railroad. She's the one who liberated her family and friends from Maryland's Eastern Shore. Despite federal, state, and municipal laws that kept them in slavery, that was legal, brutally violent, and nearly impossible to escape, but always legal. The Tubman we need to know lived a long life fighting to change those laws and fighting to change the way we create them. We need to know the Tubman who could read America despite not being able to read books. She could read America, and as a believer, she could envision a different and a better America. We need to know Tubman, the supporter of John Brown. Tubman, the Civil War nurse, spy, and one-time battleship commander. We need to know Tubman, who on a train from Philadelphia to her home in Auburn, New York, refused to move from the seat that she was entitled to as a veteran of the Civil War. And because the first conductor couldn't fight her down out of that seat, he called two others, and the three of them threw her into the back train, breaking her arm and her ribs. We, not, we need to know that Tubman. We need to know the Tubman who married a second time, Mrs. Davis, she liked to be called, who took in waves of children, elderly and homeless people of every color. She, who from the talks she had given, could read America's desire to hear that underground story and dictated a biography to raise money to buy land to establish a home for elderly black people. We don't hear about Tubman, the landowner. We don't hear about Tubman who figured out social services in an era where there were no social services for black people. We need to know about Tubman who worked with white suffragettes for the women's vote until the new generation of white women suffragettes decided they were going to denounce black advancement and Tubman found ways to keep at women's vote anyway through the National Association of Colored Women and other organizations. Special thanks to Arden Theater for arranging this brief reading from my play, My General Tubman. During spells, three to five minutes of traumatic epilepsy from a brain injury at the hands of an overseer, 
Harriet Tubman told a writer once, she sometimes felt as if she could hear music, but sometimes she said she felt like she was able, she was able to reach, to touch, to sense the mind of God. My General Tubman, like much of the African diaspora, experiences past, present, and future as a connection, as an interconnected stream. Tubman imagined, my General Tubman imagines that during those spells, Harriet Tubman came here to contemporary Philadelphia, that she went to Philadelphia prison and recruited men to take back to the 19th century to spy with her and fight with her. I know, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, but it's also crazy to think that she got free. It's also crazy to think that people, that the situation we have with prison will always be that way. Directly after the excerpts, we'll hear from Tope's masters in the room, starting first with Philadelphia Commissioner Omar Sabir. We'll hear from people making toasts from home, and all of us can use this occasion to celebrate the young activists of PA Youth Vote who convinced Philadelphia School Board to allow for the registration of 18-year-olds in schools. That means 8,000 new voters who can come onto the roll. That is worthy of the legacy of Tubman. That is worthy of the person who, in the words of, of our Philadelphia historian, Erica Armstrong Dunbar, came to slay. Here on the museum stage, original cast member Aaron Bell will act as the chorus. He joins Sarah Glico as Abigail Wright, and Morgan Sharice Hall as Harriet Tubman. To align with COVID precautions, they're doing a reading as opposed to acting, acting at, uh, actively. Um, and they're going to have one monologue at the beginning of the play, Harriet Tubman doing a fundraising speech, showing her savvy way of understanding America, and then an ending again by the chorus. For me, this play is my toast to General Tubman. And now our actors. Take water for our muse, where our black past has dissolved. Take vapor and black storm clouds raining down on us through time. Drink it in. Before she renamed herself Harriet Tubman, seven-year-old Araminta, barefoot in the cold Chesapeake Bay, sets free Muskrats, she's told to drown in their traps. Told to drown in their traps, and laughs, Woo! because nothing is more joyous than freedom, <sniffs> cutting through water from then to this stage. Come, fight with her, walk, love, laugh. It's a play. Y'all can laugh with the general because she lives. Time ripples around her, drummed out of time by black necessity. Tubman's gravity pulls and time bends now. See, Massachusetts parlors, where women of means pay to glean a glimpse of bondage, ooh, and to hear power from a woman dragged through time, more vulnerable than they, to men and money. They need to know. How does it feel to be black? Does it hurt? Because if you can listen to someone else's jeopardy, it means you are safe. And if you can listen to their triumph, 
then whatever your part in their pain, the cotton you wear, the food you eat, the accounts your husbands manage, well, it's okay because Harriet's fine and the good ones, the strong ones escaped. Find me a story I like, one that tells me what I want to hear and make it quaint. Now, Harriet, I've invited a parlor full of abolitionist women this afternoon. They care for the cause and they are generous. Not all of them are radical. I say this so that you know who you're talking to, my dear, that they're not all radical. That is, they don't all believe in strict equality, but as the necessity this afternoon is not so much to change hearts as it is to raise as much cash as possible, I've erred on the side of money. These women have it and they give it. You have only to share those wonderful stories of yours in that quaint rustic style. And, and you should be able to walk out of here today with a hundred dollars and more to come in the future. Quaint. I guess I can be quaint, yes. Uh, <laughs> my dear, you know what I mean. They say I do. They are Christian women, of course. So you can tell them that, that funny line you always say about God sending you back to Maryland with knees knocking. It's only the truth. If, if you can think of anything, anything that speaks directly to ladies. I mean, we are all women, aren't we? Privileged as they are, they are not their own masters. It's a thought. I'm thinking, a hundred dollars, a boy would have to launder and cuff every collar in Philadelphia for about two years to make that, so we'll do quaint, won't we? You go ahead, I'll sit here and watch. Hmm. I give you the woman of the hour, Harriet Tubman, even now a fugitive from Maryland with a bounty on her head, a woman who can claim no fewer than at least eight trips south to bring to freedom in the North and in Canada more than 50 souls. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wright. <clears throat> I'll start when I was seven and they hired me out to a man that was, who sent me minding his musket traps. About yay big. You balance them on Lake Wee, muskrats screaming for the bait and the slanted door closes behind them. The weight sinks the thing underwater and they drown. That's how it works. Now, my job was, I'm supposed to check the traps, reach in and pull out the caucuses and then bring them home. But sometimes those little muskrats figure out a way to tilt that trap up, keep their noses above the water. The master told me, I had to find, I had to find, the master told me that if they weren't dead, I was to hold them under. You know, drown them. But I didn't do that. I let them go free. When I finally ran to the north, it was glory all around me. But my family wasn't free. So I start to think and pray, and God called me to go to Baltimore for my niece, Keziah, and her children. She was being sold at a big auction house by the river. Can you imagine? When the sale was done, the auctioneer took Keziah and her children back into the pen, and he's all happy with himself, <laughs> and goes in to have his supper, probably a drink too. We slipped her out the back onto a little boat and rowed her and the children upstream. Freedom cutting through water. Now going all the way back to Dorchester County, Maryland, that was, that was different. I cannot stand here and tell you that I wasn't afraid. I'd done it because I never go no place except where God has sent me. But he will send you with knees knocking. <laughs> Ladies, 
We are in the presence of the black she-Moses of our time. Who among us has been in the room with such daring and, yes, delivered with such humility and, well, quaintness? Please join me in giving generously to support her in her next adventure and in the care of her aged parents, now free. By the second year of the Civil War, our black she-Moses had learned the waterways, landings, and people of the Gullah Islands and secured $100 from the Secret Service to pay informants. Next summer, with her own crew of spies, Harriet Tubman prepared for a raid to strike at the heart of the most rebellious rebel territory, 25 miles up the Combahee River. Who's that wants more men? A guns? What for? Us few, exhausted, tired, black and blue from scouting, searching, spying, hiding. Do we need more guns to set freedom free? We have crawled on our bellies through time itself to do this new thing together. Yes, there is danger. Yes, we have to steamboat through the rebel stronghold to take back the truth that there is no such thing as a slave. Only greed and guns and lies and guns and men who eat children and wonder why they're sick. We are few and we may die, but if so, we will die remembered, not dismembered by history. This full moon tonight is ours. You want to go back to jail and miss it? Miss the Kumbaya Rebel Raid? Miss the miracle of this band of brothers, South Carolina Heavy Infantry? They picked the cotton that we'll harvest tonight. Rhode Island Heavy Artillery, God help the soft when they start in to fight. And you men that I, that I climb through time together, You've been chosen close. Just you few brothers to find the sluice and bridge and horses, to seize the rice and corns that the union needs, and to warn black people to listen for their freedom cutting through the water. A black woman gave birth to you, gentlemen. And a, black woman will, and a black woman will steer you through harm with love. I am your General Tubman. We do not own ourselves, but we'll own the day when it dawns. Climb aboard, men. You know your places. That's right. Yeah. Woo. OK. <laughs> Sorry, where were we? <laughs> June 2nd, 1863, right. The only woman ever to lead a battle in the Civil War relished the fight and planned to win. Lit by a full moon, three boats steamed up the Combahee, avoiding torpedoes the South had laid and Tubman spies had discovered. Once untouchable inland estates were to be emptied, enslaved people liberated, the South's confidence shattered, all without bloodshed. The landing party, former enslaved men from South Carolina sporting their union blue. It was that kind of night. At the end of the raid, Three steamboats returned to the Union line unharmed, laden with more than 750 newly liberated people and tons of provisions. A shocked Confederacy reeled. <laughs> Harriet Tubman wrestled America using brains and faith and love. But we project her in our own image, retelling the gun in the sack story as if black cowardice, not slavery, was
was the foe. Her Kumbahi River Raid shows us how to use power, freedom from chaos without a shot. And her second marriage encourages us to try again, to risk new love. Let's say we put her face on the 20. Will it remind us that to her owners, she could be, as they like to say, money in their pockets? Will we remember how cheaply we hold the memory of those Americans? America bought and sold. Or will we just spend them yet again? Happy Women's History Month. You make some noise, right? Uh, there we go. Good afternoon. I'm City Commissioner Omar Sabir. I'm one of three city commissioners. City commissioners are three member, bipartisan board of elected officials. And we handle all the election functions in Philadelphia County and the voter registration. I'd like to thank both that John. Uh, you know, 2020 election, there was a lot of scrutiny. It was just, it was a lot. And both that John was with us. He was our registering voters forming a community about how to vote, when to vote. You know, I had voter registration forms, I had paper forms. They said, we're gonna register some folks. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna show y'all y'all young whippersnappers something. I had paper register. they had the laptops and all that, and the tablets and stuff. <laughs> we're gonna register like that, this is how we register. And it was a great uh, experience. I'm looking forward to working uh, in the future. Today is a profound occasion. I would like to thank everyone for showing up to celebrate Harriet Tubman's legacy during Women's History Month. And I would also like to thank all of the powerful women for the amazing work that you do. Madam Tubman was born in March and passed on March 10th, 1913. Her legacy still beams like the sun in the sky and gleams like the star in the night. She is the true mother of service. Her resilience and brilliance had no bounds. Madam Tubman's history will continue to live on. This toast is to Harriet Tubman. Um, hello, my name is Shayla Street, um, former Boat That Join uh, intern and also a part of PA Youth Vote on the advisory board. And it's so good to be here virtually. I feel like I'm home through the computer. So a toast to Tubman, a true patriot, a general. Talk about infantry, a woman who refused to settle, a womanist who did not believe in change over time, but change now, a free woman, fearless enough to reimagine and recreate, an inspiration to us all to push on, change on, General Tubman taught us that what seems foreign is what will set us all free. Free from notions that we are natural born slaves. Free reminds us that freedom is possible. There's a difference between enslaved and slave. Not leaving one behind, but rising up together. So pick up that join, shout out that join, remind them of that join, toast to that join. Thank you. Uh, my name is Angie Pajadas, and I am a student at the University of Pennsylvania. And I'm going to be reading a toast that was written by State Rep. Joe Webster from the 150th Legislative District. Harriet Tubman is most often known for her work with the Underground Railroad, Railroad. But she was also an outspoken supporter of women's suffrage, or women's right to vote. Tubman recognized that the power to vote is the power to effect real change. Her work and legacy would inspire others to continue the fight 
for women's suffrage even after her death in 1913. A toast to Tubman as we thank her for her endless pursuit in the fight for freedom and democracy. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Kyla Downs and I am also a student from the University of Pennsylvania. Today I will be reading a toast from Mr. Stroman Wheeler, an actor who played my General Tubman for the 2021 New Jersey Theater Festival. We owe so much to Harriet Tubman's heroism and fortitude. Although Ms. Tubman is known largely for her courageous efforts of the Underground Railroad, her accomplishments didn't stop there. It is exciting to continue celebrating her and acknowledging her involvement in women's suffrage, especially at this time when voting is a major part of our nation's conversation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carson Eckerd. I'm a Vote That John alum, and I now work for the Liberation Foundation. Years after the Combahee River Raid, Harriet Tubman recalled her life's work as an Underground Railroad conductor freedom leader and advocate for the disenfranchised, declaring, I should fight for my freedom as long as my strength should last. In a world where violence persists, where disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement continues, and we, re we remember Harriet's strength and may we continue her fight for abolition and justice. To Harriet and to courage, that we may have the bravery to fight for freedom as long as our strength should last, and that we may care for and support those around us who endeavor to do the same. To Harriet. Elena, and I am also a student at the University of Pennsylvania. Not only did Harriet Tubman show an incredible amount of bravery when helping free enslaved African Americans, but she was also a very outspoken suffragette. The best way to honor her today would be to continue her wish of making voting available and easy for all citizens. Let's give a toast to Tubman by thinking about ways we can continue her legacy and advocating for more accessible voting practices in Philadelphia and across our country. Um, hi, my name is Isaiah Lucas, and I'm here to give a toast to Harriet Tubman and her awe-inspiring legacy. We give thanks to her for liberating herself and other slaves through the Underground Railroad to freedom. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Nyla Rankin. I'm from Girard College. Today I will be giving a toast to Harriet Tubman. As we all know, it is Black History Month, which you know ended two days ago, and it's now Women's History Month. Harriet is the first example of a strong Black woman. Not only did she fight for her own, she fought for her family and she fought for her people and her community. And for that, she is a legend. So this is to Harriet. Thank you, good afternoon. I'm Sharif al -Maki. I'm with the Center for Black Educator Development and uh, really pleased to, uh, you know, to be here. If you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If they're shouting after you, keep going. Don't ever stop. What? Keep going. If you want to taste of freedom, when I think of Araminta Ross, I think that of how inspirational it was that it, I named my eldest daughter after her. Araminta Ross, or Harriet Tubman, as we know her. I think of intersectionality of the freedom movement and that she wasn't paid her dues as an enslaved human being or as a liberated one. As I toast my General Tubman, I think of her voice, her message of self-determination that directly ties to voting rights and suffragism. I think of how her freedom work and the freedom work of people like Octavius Caddo intersect. I reflect on it for Harriet's freedom work and how it ties to the women's rights, suffrage movement, and the fight today for disenfranchised people. I think of her bravery and leadership, and that same leadership and courage 
necessary today to protect and solidify voting rights so that it can be beyond the stroke of a divisive and deceitful mindset hiding behind racist pens and keyboards. To paraphrase my general, our general, Harriet Araminta Ross Tubman, reach for the stars to change the world and reach for the ballot while you're at it. And no matter what the opposition says or does, keep, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Gay. I'm the former executive director of Art Sanctuary. Um, and I had the great pleasure of having um, oversight of the winning team, one of the winning teams for that first boat that John. We had the youngest team, the youngest person in our team was just 12 years old at the time. The oldest was 16. So none of them could vote. And yet they were inspired to get out other folks to, in their communities, their near peers, the 18 year olds in their lives, as well as adults. They stood on street corners, they went to supermarkets, they talked to their friends and neighbors to get people to vote. And that really rings true for me. Um, with Harriet Tubman thinking about um, her suffrage and, and thinking about her, her strength, even in the face of friendly fire, that's what I'll call it friendly fire, that as a woman, as a Black woman, as a strong Black woman, who was also interested in making sure that other people were free, put her life on the line for other people to be free. I can't help but think about the legacy of my own family's line. As I stand here in a hospital, my mother and father on the other side of this curtain here, um, as my parents, um, as my mother is, is recuperating, those people taught me about the importance of voting because my grandparents had to pay poll tax and jump through all kinds of hoops to vote. When I first learned about Harriet Tubman and her strength, I thought about would I be able to handle what she faced as a child, as an adult, as a freedom fighter, as a suffragist, as a spy, I still don't know the answer to that. And so as I reflect on her, all I can think of is thank you, Harriet Tubman. And here's to my general, Harriet. Thank you. But it's a pleasure to be asked to join you. And it couldn't have been, this toast to Harriet Tubman couldn't have come at a more appropriate time. You know, freedom is, in one way, the most enduring of all human emotions. People everywhere want to be free. They want to be able to create their own destiny. They want to be able to do what they think is the right path to follow. And yet in the history of human endeavor, freedom has been restricted by so many different forces. And we're lucky that over the centuries, we've had freedom fighters from Spartacus back in ancient Greece to someone like Harriet Tubman, who fought for the freedom of so many and was so successful against seemingly all odds. And now, as we recognize Harriet for her great work and her bravery and her courage, we're seeing the world go through another heartbreaking instance of people who just want to be free, who just want to create their own destiny, who just want to rule their own country. And those people have given a strong definition of the word freedom. We owe a lot to the Ukrainians who have fought so hard against such an overwhelming odds and are holding their own just because there is no stronger emotion than the emotion to be free. So as we toast Harriet Tubman, a great freedom fighter, from our country, a great freedom fighter who set us on the right path. Let's also take a minute to toast every one of those loyal Ukrainians who lay down in front of rolling tanks, who fight having never held a gun until yesterday, 
who are willing to do all for their country and their freedom and their people. So a toast to Harriet Tubman, to the great work that she did, a true American hero, and toast to a lot of American heroes who happen to be from Ukraine. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha and I'm also a student at the University of Pennsylvania um, and I'm excited to toast to Tubman today as well. This year marks Harriet Tubman's 200th birthday. Harriet Tubman once said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. She was not only a dreamer, but also a natural born leader who inspired others with her own bravery. To dream is to believe not only in your peers, but to believe in the potential that your peers possess. Here's to more than dreaming for, but voting for, a better future, and to honoring her centuries old legacy to being the change that you want to see. Thank you, everyone. That's okay. This is the last one, that's good. Thanks so much to everyone, to Commissioner, to Kelly Lee for bringing, uh, being part of bringing that amazing Wofford statue to the north side of City Hall. Thank you very much for that. It matters that we have occasions, occasions to be reminded. It's one of the things art does, is it reminds us of things that we tend to forget. And as human beings, we tend to forget the most important things. Thank you, all of us. Thank you so much, um, Sharif el Meki, for telling us, as you tell your educators, to keep going. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. I know you keep going and you're out on the streets and everywhere, all over, all the time. Um, thank you to the uh, African American Museum members who have come and to the students. Nothing, nothing, nothing will change. Nothing will change without persistence. Nothing will change without us making it change. That's, that's climate, that's justice, that's all the things that matter to you, which is why all of us are behind 18 year olds getting out and voting and saying, we won't have it. We won't have it like this anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Tubman. Thank you again to the actors, Aaron Bell, Morgan Sharice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and to Ms. Glico, thank you, uh, Arden Theater, and good night.